सतोषयता सत श्रीलूपनातनो दाक्षिण्यन भट्टेन पुनरेत तस्यादम ग्रंथनालेक क्रांतव्युत्क्रांतखंडित पर्यालोच्याथ पर्याय लिखति जीवक हरे कृष्ण सो विल स्टार्ट अवर डिस्कशन विल कंटिन्यू अवर एशोडे इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट एंड यू कैन ओपन यू दैट फाइल एशोडे वी लर्न वॉट इज संदर्भ द डेफिनेशन ऑफ संदर्भ एंड ऑल्सो द समरी ऑफ संदर्भ in the form of mangala charana shloka is written so that also we have seen then after that we saw shrimad bhagavatam as the emperor pramana and the structure of the the sandarbha written style the style written written style also we have seen so there are two different vakyas are there first one is the sutrasthaniyam vakyam that is also known as, that is avatarika vakyam that means introductory statement is known as sutra it is taken as a sutra and next vishaya vakyam so that means that vishaya vakyam is going to deal about is going to expand the sutra so that's why that is shrimad bhagavat vakyam why we are taking only shrimad bhagavat vakyam because shrimad bhagavat is the emperor pramana so based upon that only we expand the meaning of the sutra that is sutra sthaniyam vakyam and shrimad bhagavatam shloka if you take it as vishaya vakyam there is a need of commentary on that so that's why yeah that commentary can be the possible ways we discussed that can be the commentary of shila sridhar swami who is the great vaishnava and of course some places in his commentary we are seeing which is in favor of advaita vada that is just knowingly it is done to attract advaitins towards the vaishnavism that was done and also we understood this commentary can be based upon the yeah vaishnavas other vaishnavas from the south india and also it is according to the ramanuja bhashya so that you want me to share this screen the now itself to the okay i'm going to share the screen where i am speaking so that online students and on site both they can understand where from where which line i am speaking that is that so that it will be easy so because many students they may not know the sanskrit and they may feel difficulty in following me so that's why for your convenience we are going to do that so i am sharing the my screen so that i will show that screen and also explain so see this is a vishay vakyam shrimad bhagavata vakyam the here i am reading so then after that discussing of this we went to yeah we are going to next part that is why jeev go swami is giving other quotations from the various puranas and vedas upanishads those are all those references were given to support 
his siddhanta which he is using to explain that means while explanation of of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam statement. So that's why these references, whatever he is giving, those are not meant for sub, or sub, or proving the, the authenticity of Srimad Bhagavatam, but they are there to just support the Siddhanta, what Srila Jiva Goswami is, is believing or is mentioning there. Okay, then. <clears throat> so now we are going to see the five features of a Vakya. Before, uh, because in why we are going to read this, uh, study this, because in Sandarbha study, majorly we are going to. Light is gone once again. Okay. Okay. So in Sandarbha, in the Sandarbha study, so all the time you are observing na Vishaya Vakyam will be the Srimad Bhagavata Vakyam. So that means you have to understand the Bhagavata Sloka. So there, most of the time you will be seeing the commentaries of Srila Sridhar Swami or sometimes the commentary of Jiva Goswami, his own commentary. So that means you should know the style, the writing style or the pattern of the writing commentary on any sloka. How the sloka is commented, that science you should know. So a writing commentary on any Bhagavat, any sloka is having these five kinds of the elements. What is that? Padachedaha padaroktir vigraho vakya yojana akshepeshu samadhanam vyakyanam panchalakshanam. With having these five kinds of the characteristics. So, what are those five char characteristics for any commentary on any sloka? It is generally having these five characteristics. First one is, if any Bhagavad Sloka is there, first and foremost, what we should do? Padachedaha. You should make the Sandhis. Padachedha you can do using the Sandhi. So Sandhi rules you should know. So by that, Padachedha is done. And then Padachedha means word division, separation of the words in the main text. So resolving the Sandhis. Then after that, Padaruktihi. So, padaroktihi, me, padarthoktihi. So, padartha, the meaning of that every word you should give. So that we can say generally, I use the word gloss. So we'll show in while explaining the any sloka. So I will show this once again these five elements. So padarthoktihi, the padar, the words meaning. Pada is the word, and artha means the meaning. The meaning of each word is mentioned the, because generally uh, Bhagavatam sloka, sloka in that words are very so difficult words because it's a Samadhi Bhasha. Vasudevas, if you see the writings, other writings compared to other Puranas, Srimad Bhagavatam, the, Srimad Bhagavatam is very complex. That means he used very difficult Sanskrit. So that's why the word meanings you cannot know by yourself. It's quite difficult. So that's why Sridhar Swami is, we are most of the times we are following because already Sri Jiva Goswami said, so he'll be following the most of the times Sridhar Swami only. And that's why Sridhar Swami already gave glass. That means meaning of that word. After breaking the words, whichever are the difficult, so those words, are given with their meanings. So, padar toktihi. Then after that, next is vigraha. Vigraha. Vigraha means so samasa. Vigraha vakyam. That means any compound word is there. So, you are going to expand that. So, because yeah. so compound words generally <coughs> So you can take many ways of the meanings. 
Sometimes you can take the Bahurihi Samasa, sometimes you can take Sat Tatpusha Samasa. That means one word can, can be taken any way. So, but in this context, how to expand this compound word? So that you, we should know. So that we cannot do by our whimsical way, but how the previous Acharya, Sridhar Swami, or otherwise other Acharyas, how they, they expanded that, that Vigraha, that Samasa. So based upon that, we will be understanding that Vigraha means expansion of the, the Samasa. Samasa Padam. Okay, next Vakya Yojana. Now you have the, the individual words and their meanings and also the expanded meanings of the Samasa words. So now after that, what you have to do? You have to connect those meanings to make a sentence. So that is known as, so constructing a sentence based upon the, the individual words. So that is known as Vakya Yojana. So then, so that appropriately we'll be connecting that. That means we'll see the subject, so object and verb. Generally, we understand in this way. So otherwise, in generally, what we do, we'll take first the verb in that. Then who is doing that? Verb means is action. Action is performed by the some person. So that person is a subject. You'll identify first the doer. Then after that, you'll identify the where that action is happening that is known as object and after doing that action on the someone that is known as object some result is produced so that benefit of that who is the beneficiary of that result then that is known as sampradana or chaturdi and while you are doing that action on that particular object so you may use some instrument then that is known as karana instrument karana that we use generally Tritiya Vibhakti. And then after that, so some this action you are is happening. The what is the origin of that action that is known as Apadana? And in which location sometimes that action may be happening in some particular location. So then that location is known as Adhikarana. So these things we keep in our mind and so that we'll make a so proper ways, these, we connect these words properly so that we can get the meaning. So that's why you should know this style because I will be showing you the commentary and explaining you so, the, so that you can understand. So, okay. So this loka is first of all divided like this and this is the glosses. These are the gloss given to these words and this is the expansion of the samasa. And this is the total meaning of that sloka like this. Then also one more element is there, Akshepa Samadhana. While explaining this, any sloka, so there will be some Puropakshi. We always try to explain any sloka based upon the style of the Puropakshi. That means, what are the possible Akshepa? Akshepa means possible questions. To speak the meaning of that sloka, there is a chances of some uh, doubts. So those doubts are raised in the form of Puropaksha. So Puropaksha or otherwise. So that is Nanu. Generally we, we use the word Nanu. So by using the word Nanu, you will be addressing the possible questions on that sloka. Then, so you are explaining this sloka as answer to those questions. So this is the style we follow. This is standard style. Any achar, if you see the commentaries of Sridhar Swami or the commentaries of Jeeva Goswami, Jisuna Chakrithaku, Viraragva Acharya, so and so and so, all Vallabha Acharya, everyone is following the same style. Okay, this is the so needed thing to understand the, the commentary of any sloka. So we understood what are the commentaries we take how we take the commentaries on the Bhagavatam statement and how the commentary generally, the structure, the style, style of the writing commentary also we understood. Now we'll come to the, the subject matter a little bit. So we are seeing the, that means this book, Sandarbha, six Sandarbhas are written to expand three things. What are those? 
ಸಂಬಂಧಿತತ್ವಂ ಅಭಿಧೇಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನ ಸೊ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈಂಗ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಸ ದಟ್ ಬುಕ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಸಂಬಂಧ ವಿತ್ ಹೂಮ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಬುಕ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಭಿಧೇಯ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೇಮ ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದಿ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಖದೇವ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಅಂಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಸದೇವ್ ಸೊ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಅಭಿಧೇಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ so to elaborate these things very systematically in in a proper order so we are going to write that means srila jeev goswami wrote six sandarbhas yes so the what is the one shloka in that shrimad bhagavatam which is showing the 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 structure that means the way these sandarbhas are divided so the now to expand sambandhi tattvam we need sandarbhas to expand abhidhe tattvam we need sandarbhas to expand the the aprayojana tattvam we need sandarbha so which sandarbha is explaining the aprayojana tattvam that is aprayojana that is priti which what is which is expanding the or which is uh, discussing about the abhidheya that which sandarbha that is bhakti now the sambandhi tattvam so to speak on the sambandhi tattvam so we need sandarbhas so sandarbhas are written so how this sambandh tattvam is is dealt that is dealt based upon the one shloka that means we are seeing the four sandarbhas to explain the sambandh tattvam so what are those tattva sandarbha bhagavat sandarbha paramatma sandarbha shri krishna sandarbha so why these names are these names are only given to that why jeev goswami is taking like this tattva sandarbha he is saying why he is saying the bhagavat sandarbha why he is saying the paramatma sandarbha and shri krishna sandarbha why so is there any reference or is there any some uh, factor behind this so that is there yes shrimad bhagavatam itself is saying that means shrimad bhagavatam is telling about the the vastu so what he is saying vedyam vastava matra vastu sivadam tapatriyon moolana so vyasdev in mangala charana is writing in this shrimad bhagavatam he is going to discuss about the such a vastu what is that vastu dharma projita kaitavatra parama nirmatsaranam sata vedyam vastava matra vastu sivadam tapatriyon moolanam that means he is going to discuss about a vastu which is completely free from the kaitava dharma cheating religion and also it is vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam that is that will gives the auspiciousness shivadam means the one which gives auspiciousness auspiciousness and also tapatriyon moolanam it will remove the tapatriyam means the material miseries so such a vastu we are going to discuss and that is the object of the discussion the name is not given in the mangala charanam while writing so sri la vasudev he didn't write the exactly directly the name krishna but he said vastu that is then sotu goswami further if you go to the next chapter of the second chapter of the shrimad bhagavatam you will be seeing that vastu is is said as ವದಂತಿ ತತ್ತತ್ವೇದಸ್ತತ್ವಮಜ್ಞಾನಮದ್ವಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೇತಿ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇತಿ ಶಬ್ದತೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವಸ್ತು ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೈನ್ ಡಿಫೈನ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಸೋತು ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಯಾಸ್ ಅದ್ವಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ತತ್ವ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ತತ್ವ ಯಜ್ ಅದ್ವಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಸಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ವದಂತಿ ತತ್ ತತ್ವ ವಿಧಸ್ ತತ್ವ ವಿಧಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ನೋವರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ತತ್ವ ಸೊ ತತ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಸ್ತು ದ ಆಬ್ಸುಲ್ಯೂ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವಸ್ತು ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ತತ್ವ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ತತ್ವ ಸೊ ತತ್ವ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅದ್ವಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅದ್ವಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೇತಿ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇತಿ ಶಬ್ದತೆ 
and that vastu is only tattvam here and that tattvam is the advaya gnanam and that is also known as brahma paramatma bhagavan and that bhagavan who is that bhagavan in the next chapter of this srimad bhagavatam in the third chapter you are going to see that bhagavan is krishnastu bhagavan swayam ete cham shakalapam saha krishnastu bhagavan swayam there it is said that bhagavan is sri krishna so that's why we want to know krishna actually that krishna that vastu who what is which is denoted by uh, that means vas they denoted it as vastu and sota goswami said that as advayam gnanam and also he only saying after that that is sri krishna so that is the sambandhi that is the sambandhi with this srimad bhagavatam that means srimad bhagavatam is the vachaka and sri krishna is the vacha so that means the what kind of sambandha this book is having this book is having the vacha vachaka sambandha so and this vacha that is krishna then uh, he is also known as vastu and he is the tattvam advaya gnanam and he is also known as brahma paramatma and bhagavan and he is only sri krishna so now i might be you can understand now so why these sandarbhas are divided in this way so now first tattva sandarbha is is what he is discussing about that vastu that absolute truth that as tattvam so that's why tattva sandarbha means discussion discussion of vastu in the form of tattvam okay the that means advaya gnana tattva is explained in tattva sandarbha that means tattva sandarbha how it is dealing about that absolute truth in the form of tattva that's why it is known as tattva sandarbha that is the way tattva sandarbha name we got and bhagavata sandarbha what it is doing it is also defining it is also telling about that absolute truth only but in the form of what bhagavan and brahma brahman so that means only one vastu it is seen by the it is seen different ways that one vastu is seen in many ways what is that brahma paramatma bhagavan that one vastu sometimes we can call as brahman we can call sometimes as paramatma sometimes we can call as bhagavan so who is seeing that vastu as brahman that advaya gnanam as brahman who is seeing who is seeing tattva vidas they are saying that as that as advaya gnanam but that is known as brahman in whose case so yeah the gnanis gnanis see vastu or the advaya gnanam as brahman and yogis they see uh, as paramatma and devotees they see that as bhagavan so these three different kinds of the realizations actually these three are not different brahma is one thing Brahm, paramatma is one thing bhagavan is one thing no like only one person so someone call him as father someone same in the family members one wife will call him as husband he is husband for him and for the children he is a father and for the mother he is a son so like this they are only one object is treated as as yeah many ways why they are having this kind of difference why everyone if only the one object then everyone should see in one way you may get this kind of doubt why they are seeing differently what is the reason hmm? what is the difference between these three prabhu i am not able to hear they are seeing the same person different ways because of relationship 
what is that relation? Who is deciding this relation? What is the factor to decide this? Why we are seeing one was the, the three different people, they are seeing three different upasakas, gnanis, yogis, yeah, these bhaktas. Paramakaruna Prabhu, you want to say? Paramakaruna Sindhu Prabhu is there, Paramakaruna Prabhu is also there. Uh. Yeah, because of the difference in the practice of devotional service. So, what is the difference? What is the cause for the difference? I am asking the, that point. Yes, I have, uh, definitely their practice is different. So, then the, in the practice, difference is coming. So, who is bringing that difference? Vastu? Vastu is only one. But their practice is different based upon what? How can you say it's different? So, for example, difference means what I am saying. So, these, these two pens are there. These two pens are different because so this is not having the red color. This is not having red color and this is having the red color. So, these two are the different. We'll show this difference is there is a difference due to color. So similarly, these three processes are different due to due to bhakti, due to, due to the amount of bhakti in each process. So in the bhakti process, bhakti is full. And in the yoga process, bhakti is, is, the, is the just is the secondary actually. And in the jnana process, that means jnanis, they do the jnana, jnana process. So in that, Bhakti is very minute. So, because the, there is a change in the amount of the bhakti. So, that's why these three different, these processes are different from each other. Okay. So, since they are having the full bhakti, so they are able to see, that means Krishna very clearly. Their vision is very clear. They have the full power of the sight. Full power they have then they can see abs, object as it is. So in the second Paramatma, that means yogis in their case, they have the, some less power. So generally what they do, Bhakti Mistra, Yoga they will do. So that's why they are able to see the Paramatma in their heart. So Bhakti is just a secondary and we are already read in the second canto, this second chapter. So, what is that? Bhakti Mistra Yoga is the cause. They are meditating on the Paramatma. So, yeah. Their Bhakti is the Gauna. Guni Bhutava actually is a secondary. And main is, Yoga is the main thing. So, that's why Bhakti is, is a little, some amount, some less amount is there compared to the Bhakti Marga. So, that's why this is. Due to this, they are not able to see the, all the features completely, nicely. The power of sight is something is is reduced, then they will be seeing something blur. That means some features they are not able to see. The loving nature of the Krishna they cannot understand. They may see the physical form, that is the form of the Lord, but the inside to that, that means the, the deep relations, they cannot understand because they don't have the, the full bhakti. And next, if we come to the gnanis in their case, what is happening? So they have very minute of the bhakti. So that's why they see the Krishna as yes, some object is there. Satta, chinmatra satta. Some existence of the object is there. Existence of object is possible. Like that, that they see. So that's why they are not able to see clearly. So that means wh whoever is having more bhakti means they are more close to the tattva. And having less bhakti means they are far from the tattva. That's why they are not able to see clearly. Gnanis means very far, even very far than the yogis. So that's why, like if you see a hill, if you go close to the hill, you can see all the objects on the top of hill. But if you are very little far from that, then you will be missing some features. You are not able to see all the attributes of the hill. And even if you are very, very far, then you will see the total hill as one thing, one object, something. Okay. No varieties. You cannot see the varieties. That's a Gnanis state. Okay, so 
that means the one object is dealt in the Srimad Bhagavatam in three ways Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. So that's why Jiva Goswami is also, while describing this is Sambandhi Tattam, that is a Vastu, and he is also divided his Sandarbhas based upon this. So this Vastu is first generally said as Advayagnam, as Tattvam, that's why Tattva Sandarbha he wrote. And next, this Vastu is also known as Brahman, that's why Brahma Sandarbha he wrote. What is that? Brahma Sandarbha is also part of the Bhagavad Sandarbha. Brahma, Bhagavan. Of course, name is given Bhagavad Sandarbha because Bhagavan is a prominent. But there we are seeing the Vastu is defined in the form of Brahman. That is also we are going to discuss in that. So that's why it is Brahma Sandarbha also. Uh, one second. Yeah. Now what is it? Question. <coughs> is it written? Ahat okay. Uh. <coughs> Purushottam Prabhu, please unmute your uh, Prabhu Hare Krishna Dandatnam. Sorry. Uh, yes. the, the, you mentioned the Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vasta Sivadam. Yeah. So th in that particular verse 1.1.2, Vastu. It refers to bhakti? No, it, it refers to the object, subject of this book. Atra means in the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are going to discuss about the Vastu. That Vastu okay. is free from the all the cheating religion. And that Vastu is going to give the auspiciousness to you. Sivadam. Sivadam. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And also, yeah. And also it is Tapatryon Mulanam. It destroy the unmolana means root, rooting out mm -hmm. of what tapatrayam that means material misery. Kleshas. Yeah, Kleshas. Three Kleshas. Okay. That Prabhu, also you mentioned about the uh, it's because of different degrees of bhakti. Yes. It literally means the, the, the various way the jiva having love with the Lord, yes. or is yes. it the is it the covering of three modes? Which is not allowing the jiva to uh, go near to the Lord. No, not modes. Because these three states, gnanis, yogis, and bhaktas, these three are transcendental only. They are all transcendental. They are completely free from the modes. So that's why modes, their difference is not based upon modes. There is no influence of modes on these three but based upon the bhakti. That means the degree of the bhakti is changing. Thank why you. it is changing, one may ask. Ah, everyone is jivatma. Then why there is a difference? Everyone should be one way. So what is the reason for this? Then why this degree of the bhakti is there? Changing of bhakti. So bhakti quantity is changing. Why? Because, 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 because. What is the answer? Because of individual uniqueness of living entities and voluntary relationship. Mm, no. Anyone wants to guess online? I will hear only if they speak in the mic. Otherwise... Because every jiva's uh, constitutional position, I mean, uh, the swarupa is different, Prabhu. That means jivatma, that means if you say like this, that means jivatma is having the only fixed constitutional position and it cannot be doing the bhakti. Huh? Some jivatmas are not eligible for the bhakti. That means you are accepting that jivatma is not competent to do bhakti. It is only competent to do jnana. Huh? Like that? Not like that. But yeah, basically, the jiva is, jiva is having that inherited uh, jnana. Your, your philosophy is disgracing some people actually. And it is not e equal to everyone. And it is showing partiality actually. And yeah, that feature, if you have that kind of feature in your philosophy, then people put finger on that philosophy. Oh, this is having this defect. We don't want this kind of thing. So that means it is not giving equal opportunity. So it is not then, then why this difference is coming? Yes, Nam Sankirtan Prabhu. Others also, they may try. I guess, I guess. So Online students also, if they want to say, they can raise the hand. Okay. 
I believe it will, be, it will depend upon the uh, how much mercy they would re re receive from a pure devotee of the world. So depending of on their receptivity, if they're able to receive the mercy of a pure devotee, then their desires will be different and they will want to serve the Lord in his personal Many are you are saying, tell one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so according to the association with a pure devotee, if someone... According to the association is the right answer based upon the association. If Jivatma somehow or other, if it is coming in contact with the Gnanis, then because of that association, it is going to develop. So then he is going to develop the, the mood of the Gnani and they will be going to see that as Brahman. And if they come in contact with the Yogis, yes, they will be becoming the Yogis. And if they come in contact with the pure devotees, then they will become devotees. So devotion is offered to the Jivatma by, by the Vaishnava. And it is also coming due to association only. The own, one and only reason to get the bhakti is, so any Jivatma is getting bhakti means that is only cause is association. Huh? Yeah. I didn't hear. Satam <laughs> Kripa. I am not able to hear. Okay. Association of the devotees is the cause for this. References. Okay, next. <clears throat> we are going a little slow, so let us increase the speed. Now, Brahman and Bhagavan aspects of this tattva are dealt in the Bhagavad Sandarbha. This is. And next, the concept of Paramatma and its relation with Prakriti. Paramatma means Paramatma Sandarbha. Paramatma, who is Paramatma? Why this concept is there? Paramatma concept is, what is the need of Paramatma concept? Why the Lord introduced this concept? What is the, what is the duties of Paramatma? What he does? Paramatma is the controller of Prakriti. Maya Shakti and Jiva, Jiva Shakti. Prakriti Kupadi. So, yeah. Prakriti, he is, country, he is controlling these two. And he is giving, he is sanctioning the results to the Jiva based upon its karma. And sitting in the everyone's heart. And also he is becoming the so controller of the Brahmanda in the form of Garbhodaka Sai Vishnu. And he is also hesitating the Prakriti, which is non react, non act is not which is not active. So that Prakriti became active because of the glances on of Karnana Sai Vishnu. That means Bhagavan only is taking the different expansions. So in the form of Karnana Sai Vishnu, Garbhodaka and the Shirdaka Sai Vishnu and controlling this Maya and Jivas at different levels. Okay, so that's why. So Lord, this, this absolute truth, this Advai Tattvam, Advayam Tattvam is, is available in the form of Paramatma. So that's why we are going to, that is also Sambandhi Tattvam. So we are going to learn about that same Advayam Tattvam in the form of Paramatma in Paramatma Sandarabha. So one minute. So then after that, this Paramatma, this Advaita Tattvam is also is, is treated as Bhagavan. That means it is Bhagavan only actually. And that we are going to see in the Bhagavad Sandarbha. And that Bhagavan is, who is that Bhagavan? That is Krishna only. That we are going to see in the Krishna Sandarbha. We are going to see means we already, we have seen all this. These four sandarbhas you read are not now. You read now these four sandarbhas. How this advayam gnanam is dealt that you all learn now. In tattva sandarbha it is dealt as tattvam and that is dealt as Brahman and Parama Bhagavan in the in the Bhagavad sandarbha and also in the Parama sandarbha as Paramatma in Krishna sandarbha and that Bhagavan is proved as as a Sri Krishna only. So that also we learn. So now we have to go to next Sandarbha. What is that Sandarbha? That is the Abhideya, which is discussing about the Abhideya. That is the Bhakti Sandarbha. So you see, already you read four Sandarbhas. Nice. Ah, okay, what is Mahaseva Prabhu saying? <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhu. Ah, yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So, uh, you said that association is the only cause 
Then yeah. again, there is, it is like a discrimination approach that who will get the association of pure devotee and who will get the association of jnanis and yogis like that. Ah. Why there is a discrimination? Because then who will, if it is not the propensity of the jivas, then who will decide that what association he will get or what association he will take? Sadhu will decide. Sadhu will decide. Vaishna will decide what I should give to him and what I should not give. He is having free will, complete free will. Even Lord is not having any objection for this. Whatever you want to give, you give. Nobody can order him. So that's why we are fully dependent on Vaishnavas. So that's why Sadhu, if he wants to give the full mercy, he will give full. He wants to give only half. Well, you cannot ask why you are giving full and why you are giving to half. Because it's ahaituki. It is causeless mercy. There is no cause. It's his own free will. His own free will. He is having full power actually in distribution of the mercy of the Lord. So that's why you cannot force him. And nobody can force. Okay, next. Say the head, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you. Um, I had a question that uh, regarding this order of the Sandarbhas. Now we just, uh, it's, you were saying first is Sattva Sandarbha, which makes sense, Advegyan Tattva. Then we have Brahman and Bhagavan being discussed in Bhagavad Sandarbha. And then we go to Pramatma. Now, why did Jiva Goswami, do you have any insight? Why did Jiva Goswami chose this order of Brahman, Bhagavan, and then Paramatma? Yeah, good question. So in Bhagavad Sandarbha, that is explained. Why he is discussing the Brahman and Bhagavan in one place? And because he is saying, if I explain about the Brahman and Bhagavan initially, these two aspects of the absolute truth, then Paramatma Sandarbha, Paramatma feature, you can understand automatically very easily. So there is a reason. This reason is there. But if you want to know exactly, then you have to read the that Sandarbha inside. So that is the reason he gives. In the Bhagavad Sandarbha, it is given initially itself. There is one statement in this, in the Anushyada number. <coughs> so, first Anushyada, second Anushyada of the Bhagavad Sandarbha, it is said, Tatra Brahma Bhagavata Yoho Vyakyata Yoho Paramatma Swayameva Vyakyataha Bhavati Iti Pradamataha Tau Eva Prastu Yati. Meaning is, First, I will explain Brahman and Bhagavan by describing these two. So, explanation of Paramatma can, be, can come automatically. So, that's why I will explain these two things in first in this Sandarbha. One is, what is the difference? Brahman is, Brahman is what? Chinmatra Satta. And what is Bhagavan? All Sektis plus Chinmatra Satta. So, you are seeing the Chinmatra Satta. And also all sektis plus chinmatra satta. Then what is paramatma? Some sektis plus chinmatra satta. That easily can be understood. Understand? Thank you, Prabhu. That is the reason. If you, shall I write? No need. No need. Okay, next. <coughs> huh? Huh. Param Karuna Prabhu. Once again. One doubt is enough, okay. I'm so sorry, it's going slow for you, but uh, there are two questions, Prabhu. Uh, is this, when it comes to the Yoga Mishra Bhakti, when the yogis are saying Paramatma, is Not there yoga. any category? Bhakti Mishra Yoga. Yoga Mishra oh, sorry, but another thing. Actually. Sorry. Yes, yes, sorry. Bhakti Mishra Yoga. So, in which the yoga is more prominent and they are saying Paramatma feature of the Lord. Now, is there any categorization that this yoga is saying more Paramatma feature and this yoga is saying less Paramatma feature of the Lord? That means he's more closer to the bhakti process and there is less closer to the bhakti process? Yeah, definitely. That is there in the second canto once again. So, someone that means doing the yoga mistra bhakti, sorry, bhakti mistra yoga. So, some are going to the Brahman and some are going to the even they may go to the Vaikuntha that they may get the liberation. Some they go and merge into the Brahman, the Jyoti, that means the light. And some may go and merge into the body of the Lord. Sai Mukti is also once again, two types. And also, so once again, some may go to the Salokya Mukti also. They may get the, they may go to the same planet. 
So this changes actually based upon the various other factors. So we'll be seeing though we were, we have seen those things in the Bhag Bhagavad Gita and also in second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. Yes. And one last question, and then I'm done. So Prabhu Narad Muni was a devotee, and uh, he gave to Dhruva Maharaj Ashtanga Yoga process, and of course mantra. But uh, and Dhruva Maharaj was seeing Paramatma feature of the Lord initially, and then he jumped to the Bhagwan feature. Is it something like that? Yeah, Narad Muni gave the actually so Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So this mantra he gave. So but since in that yoga, so they, he is also chanting this name and following the the yoga process being in the Satya Yuga, so, so controlling his senses and mind to focus this. So this is, some yoga is mixed initially, but ultimately he is coming to the, to the bhakti process. So yeah, this is the way he became. That means he got the, finally the Bhagavan, that means Bhagavan appeared in front of him. <coughs> okay. Huh. Prabhu, Bhagavan aspect is discussed in two sandarbhas, Bhagavad Sandarbha and uh, Krishna Sandarbha. No, no. Oh. Krishna Sandarbha, Bhagavan aspect is not discussed. That Bhagavan is Krishna. That is said, actually. Okay, we'll come to the now. Open the, please open Bhakti Sandarbha. We are going to discuss about the Bhakti. So that is the, the process, the prescribed process in the Srimad Bhagavatam for the readers of that. The readers of me, whoever is so studying the Srimad Bhagavatam, so for them, what process is recommended? So that means Srimad Bhagavatam is telling about the absolute truth in the form of Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. So after knowing about this Sambandhi Tattvam, then what you have to do? You have to do some process. No? So that means you have to, to get that, so that nicely beautiful object that is described as the, it is a, it is a Ananda Matram, that is a pure bliss. That object is pure bliss in this way, it is described nicely. All the aspects of that absolute truth is discussed. Then what you will do by hearing this? You are a poor man and you came to know there is a, so 100 cases of the gold is there in your house. Then after hearing what you will do, is there any need to instruct anything? Immediately what you will do? You are Jivatma, you are suffering in this material world and you are getting this so much pain, so much heart and so much sweating and feeling so much, that means thirst. And your body is dried up. In many ways, you are getting this torture. That means it's a Dukkalayam actually. And that means you are poor in getting happiness. You are a poor person. Yes? So now you are a poor person and you are hearing some object is full of bliss. And in that way you heard. Then to get that, you will be doing something. Yes or no? That something, whatever you are doing is known as Abhidheya. The process you do to achieve that. That is Abhidheya. That is what? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam. So not only this, it is also many, many categories are there. That is Aropa Siddha Bhakti, Sangha Siddha Bhakti, Sarupa Siddha Bhakti, and, and also each one is having several categories. So that we are, that is the thing we are going to learn. So we, in the Sambandita, in the four Sandarbhas, we learn that object, how that object is beautiful and great. That thing we learn. Then what is the main thing now? You are a poor person and you have to get that. And what is the best process we are going to learn? So that means now you are going to get the, the result actually. So that's why Uchim Sandarbha is very important for you. Ah, Bhakti Sandarbha is important because you are going to get so you'll be going, going to know the, the best process to get that. So then immediately you will also apply in your life and you'll get that. So that's why we are going to study this Bhakti Sandarbha. There is a reason. Okay. <clears throat> so now our Sandarbha is starting with Mangala Charana Sloka. Tau Santo Shayata Santo Srila Rupa Sanatana. Dakshinatyena bhattena punaretad vivichyate tasyadyam granthana lekam kranta vitkranta khanditam pariyalochyatha pariyayam krutva likhati jivakaha. So the meaning of this sloka is given here. So you can see in that same file, it is translated for you. We tried to translate the Sanskrit text. So 
we have team team of devotees we are doing trying so but there will be some mistakes definitely and it's not that the this translation is the perfect it is in the process it means we are trying to develop this so that's why you people so if you find any mistake in this so we are always welcome your feedback and as much as possible so we'll try to give the best thing according to our capacity okay <clears throat> okay this work mangala charanam meaning i'm showing i think other other students screen is shared na for see okay this is problem on site students they are not able to see but the on site online students they are able to see so you see this is mangala charanam meaning this work is again examined or deliberated by sila gopala bhatta goswami who is from southern provenance and who pleases rupa and sanatana goswami is thoroughly examining that original writing parts of which are which were in order parts of which were out of order and parts of which were incomplete and putting it in a systematic order an insignificant jiva has written this work okay already we have learned this kind of shloka in in that first ten, eight mangala charan shlokas initially this work this sandarbhas work is written by whom by the gopala bhatta goswami and he is a great devotee from south india from the srirangam so our devotee our akijan krishna prabhu knows more fast tense about this and gopal bhatta goswami and he is inspired by whom to write this he is inspired by the rupa and sanatana they are the leaders of six goswamis so these both are the leaders in six goswamis and they inspired him so with their inspiration so he wrote that means to please them he wrote is tau santoshayata that means to make him happy to make them happy so he wrote this is the exam this is the culture actually vaishnava culture whatever we are writing books or anything we are going to please the our previous acharyas our previous vaishnavas our elder vaishnavas so that's the reason so they to please them or otherwise to please the lord generally this is the reason we try to write the books so to please them he wrote so by properly examining the so tattvam that means pun that means punar etad vivichya so tau santoshayata santau srila rupa sanatano dakshinatyena bhattena punar etad vivichyate <coughs> then after that he wrote but it was some places it is in proper order and some places it is not in proper order it is out of order kranta vikranta khanditam and also it is some place it is broken the continuation is continuously it is not there something is missing so then seeing like the this work is was like that it is not properly edited and properly structured so that's why jiva goswami little jiva ka insignificant jiva jiva kaha so here we are seeing jiva instead of jiva ha jiva goswami is just to, projecting himself as jeeva kaha kan pratya actually is coming with the meaning of insignificance insignificant so that's why jeeva goswami is saying so i am a insignificant jeeva i am trying to put this work in proper order that means paryalochya atha paryayam krutva if you see it in the sanskrit paryalochya atha paryayam krutva likhati jeeva kaha that means he is properly going through the entire work of gopala bhatta goswami and properly means paryalocha means uh, examining that in all the directions and then finally he is writing so paryayam krutva that means keeping in the proper order so he is going to the yeah he is writing in a systematic order proper order so this is the meaning of this mangalacharan shloka okay <coughs> so next uh, after mangala charan shloka by reading this every day we should recite this so that our course will be successfully completed and we'll get the mercy of the sila jeeva goswami and other 
so shad goswami and krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu krishna and also prabhupada also will become happy he also wanted his followers to study this so so that yeah we will recite this then we are going to the main text mangala charana by reading that it will bring the auspiciousness for the readers next ata purvam sandarbha chatushtayena sambandho vyakyataha you can easily understand this so while i read the sanskrit shloka your mind may get switch off what you have to do i am also showing the text to online students you try to develop any child if he doesn't know means he is not switching off and becoming the just ignorant no that child what he will say so you bring that pen if you say he doesn't know pen what you are saying bring that pen then he is looking that direction and there are two objects are there pen and pencil he might be bringing pencil also sometimes but then after bringing the pencil hey bring the pen then he will learn and he will go and learn of course he is not knowing but he is learning the same way of course you don't know the sanskrit but you should you should try to learn then you will become good speaker of the sandarbhas you can understand that very easily but you are not having that much ability or interest no problem so you try to get the english meaning okay no problem but don't sleep ah huh? in the <laughs> anyway in this line i am not getting any <laughs> let me sleep in that meanwhile one minute brain is switching off into or rather don't go to the another place okay we have different kinds of the audience who are interested in the knowing text thoroughly and also some are interested only knowing in english and we are having this both kind of both kind, uh, two kinds of the devotees and we have to try to justify both ways and no demand actually it's not that you have to learn the sanskrit that's not a demand so sometimes even i don't go that much detail also quickly i will just summarize that two three lines so that it will be easy and someone is really inquisitive then they may ask sometimes the the meaning of that exact meaning or how it is coming from those that sanskrit sentence okay so now first he is saying jiv gosam is saying that's one means anuchcheda number 1 it is starting so atra purvam sandarbha chatushtayena sambandha vyakyata so that means by four sandarbhas sambandha tatva sambandha is this sambandha is described so that means shrimad bhagavatam is the book and it is having the sambandha with the krishna what kind of sambandha vachya vachakata sambandha so that sambandha that means how the krishna is 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 dealt in this book so that is described in those four sandarbhas in what way that is it, that means how it is dealt krishna how he is dealt in the four books is described in those four books how it is dealt it is dealt in the form of tattvam and it is also dealt in the form of brahman and also it is dealt in the form of paramatma and bhagavan okay next tatra purna tatra purnas sanatana paramananda lakshana paratattva roopam sambandhi cha brahma paramatma bhagavan iti tridavir bhavataya shabditam iti nirupitam so that means what is what is said in that four sandarbhas that advayam gnanam which is eternal which is complete which is complete blissful so it's a complete bliss and that that absolute truth is said in the form of brahman paramatma bhagavan so that is manifesting or that is appearing for the devotees in these three forms in this way we describe there tatra cha where is that my good sanskrit okay okay i got it. Hmm? here okay okay yeah our devotees are doing great austerity 
so we don't have power only <laughs> without power in summer season in govardhan so devotees without fan all are sitting and hearing so i am very much thankful for all of you taking such a great pain <clears throat> i will try to finish quickly 5 minutes early i will leave <laughs> water yeah i want i also want to drink. you everyone drink water tatra cha bhagavatve neva avirbhavasya paramotkarsha pradipadita that means this advayam tatvam is manifesting for the upasaka in three different ways brahma paramatma and bhagavan so then the out of these three that means it is manifesting in three different ways one tattva only i am manifesting three different ways for them so which is best actually can you say yes which one is best bhagavan bhagavatve naiva avirbhavasya paramotkarsha pratipaditah so this is bhagavatve na avirbhavasya परमोत्कर्ष प्रतिपादिताट इज आलो एस्टाब्लिश्ड इन दिस फोर सदर्भ भगवान इज कंप्लीट रियलाइजेशन भगवान रियलाइजेशन इज अ कंप्लीट रियलाइजेशन ब्रह्मांड परमात्मा रियलाइजेशन इज इनकंप्लीट रियलाइजेशन बट इट इज नॉट इन करेक्ट रियलाइजेशन बट इट इज इनकंप्लीट डिफरेंस बिटवीन इन करेक्ट एंड इनकंप्लीट इज इज देर आर नॉट या so bhagavan brahman and paramatma relation is not error erroneous erroneous is not there in that it is a complete it is incomplete next prasangena vishnuvadya chatusanadya cha tad avataraha darshitah so prasangena विष्णुवाद्या चतुस्सनाद्या तद अवतारा दर्शिता सो दट मीन दिस भगवान ईज नथिंग बट कृष्ण एंड अदर डिफरेंट वेरियस भगवान आलो देर विष्णु भगवान इज देर राम वराह मत्स्य कूर्म सो एंड सो सो एंड सो ब्रह्माजी शिव आल सो देर आलो चतुष्कुमार नारद सो एंड सो दीज दीज आर आल नथिंग बट दि दे आर डिफरेंट अवतारा साफ दि लॉर्ड that point also we have seen so uh, especially in the paramatma sandarbha you will be seeing that uh, krishna only is manifesting in the form of or is appearing in the form of so uh, purusha purusha avataras and also guna avatar also we discussed in that paramatma sandarbha and also krishna sandarbha also we will be discussing he is manifesting in many ways so, okay next uh, that is uh, contextually in many places various avataras of the krishna also discussed in those four sandarbhas only next after sacha bhagavan swayam sri krishne veti nirdharitam finally krishna is the complete uch krishna krishna also many krishna sar de yes sir no yeah many krishna sar de that's so oh, vasudeva krishna is there devaki nandana is there so that's why who which krishna even when he appeared in this metal world also how many krishnas appeared two so one appeared in the heart of the vasudeva and another appeared in the heart of huh? nanda maharaj and it is transferred to the respectively that uh, devaki and yashoda maya and krishna appeared to the yashoda maya and he is having two hands and krishna appeared to the So Devaki, the four hands is having, and yeah, so he is in the Aishwarya Bhava. So who was the Devan Devaki? And Nanda Maharajan, Yashoda Maya, they are in the Vatsalya Bhava. So that's why Sukadev Goswami is glorifying whom? Is externally he is glorifying Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj in the fifth chapter of tenth canto. So that's why. which krishna we want which krishna is our original that means his original krishna who is our desire goal for gaudi vaishnavas ah nandanandan yashoda nandan he is our goal actually 
that is also discussed in the bhakti sandarbha that is our object for i mean that, that we want bhakti for him <laughs> we want gokulananda of, of course we we want gokulananda sir okay so that that sri krishna is the is a supreme personality of god and he is a he is a original two handed krishna he is in, he is just in the in the way he is performing leelas in the human form so there also he performs that is a original leelas actually original leelas other are duplicate he is not that <laughs> some are original probhad also says krishna is a original <laughs> and all avatars are coming from that that means they are a duplicate what no they are also original only they are also real only but that the main main and these are all portions of that like you see so we give a general example in the bhagavad sandarbha it is given how to understand this concept so how to understand krishna and other his avatars there is one good example is given what is that example that is a peacock feather if you take peacock feather so you will be yeah if you cock feather if you take and if you see straight so you will be seeing one color as prominent that is dark blue color and but if same peacock feather if you take and tilt it then you will be seeing the green sometimes yellow sometimes uh, some based upon change not sometimes based upon changing the tilting it degree of the tilting so various other colors you will be see so that one is prominent so similarly krishna is the main and if you see him with some degrees changing the degrees then he is appearing in the form of varaha kurma matya and so on so in various ways that means everything is in krishna only everything is included in him and he is all pervasive everywhere he is there <clears throat> so next so krishna is a is a supreme and yeah so paramatma vaibhava ganane cha tat tat तटस्थशक्ति निरूपाणीकरसाभावयतमुख्यलब्धिद्रयावृतस्वूपज्ञानाजस्तमोमे जड़े प्रधान रचितात्म भावा जीवा संसार दुखम च ज्ञापितम ओके दिस द बिग सेंटेंस सो दिस डिस्कशन इफ वी स्टार्ट देन इट नीड्स या ओके वी विल डिस्कस दिस टुमारो एंड 5 मिनट्स आई सेड आई विल लीव अर्ली ओके क्वेश्चंस सचदेव प्रभु या हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण या Prabhu ji, we discussed various Krishnas, and then we finally came to this Nand Nandana. So in that also Nand Nandana, my query is that there are different forms of that Krishna and brother, his boyhood, his childhood, and then the Kamara, and then the sixteen-year-old boy. So which form is the final out of this? This which is Madhuri Rasa. Let's see the young, it's a Kishora, it's a fifteen-year-old boy. Okay. So okay. Yeah. in the Rasa, Madhuri Rasa is the highest. the conjugal ah uh, which we are not going to discuss yes prabhu ji you told that yesterday we are not going to discuss that thank you prabhu ji hare krishna thank you hare krishna